CATL, the world's largest lithium ion battery manufacturer and an important battery supplier for Tesla, recently launched a new extremely fast charging and apparently a more energy dense lithium iron phosphate battery that they claim can add 400 kilometers of range, which equates to around 249 miles in a 10 minute charge and enable EVs to go over 700 kilometers on a single charge, which equates to around 435 miles. Chances are Tesla will benefit from this new CATL lithium iron phosphate battery technology because Tesla currently sources lithium iron phosphate batteries from CATL. So in this video, I want to discuss the details of this new lithium iron phosphate battery breakthrough and how Tesla's EVs could benefit in the future. I'm John and this is CleanerWatt. Lithium iron phosphate batteries have several key advantages over their nickel based alternatives, including improved safety, longer lasting batteries and lower cost. Not to mention the fact that the cathodes of these lithium iron phosphate batteries do not require cobalt, which is a metal that can have ethical concerns. Despite those benefits though, traditional lithium iron phosphate batteries do have a few downsides as well, including having a lower energy density as compared to an alternative like a nickel manganese cobalt or nickel cobalt aluminum um, cathode chemistry, which makes them unsuitable for long range EVs. And lithium iron phosphate batteries are more susceptible to potential cold weather performance issues that affect charging speed and acceleration in lower temperatures. However, as I'm going to talk about in this video, CATL's new lithium iron phosphate battery technology apparently solves these performance issues. And they mention this battery technology charging at a rate of 4C, which we'll talk about what C rates mean in this video. And they mention that these batteries will allow an EV to travel over 700 kilometers, which once again equals around 435 miles on a single charge. And as we'll talk about, they apparently have good cold weather performance as well. With that being said, I now want to dive into the details of this battery technology that CATL released in a press release and at an event that they held. In this recent CATL press release, it's written, quote, on August 16, CATL launched Shenzhen, the world's first 4C super fast charging LFP battery capable of delivering 400 kilometers of driving range with a 10 minute charge, as well as a range over 700 kilometers on a single full charge. Later on in the video, I will dive into some of the technical aspects of these batteries and how this is possible. Um, but first I want to examine these claims and kind of explain this just a little bit and put it in context. So first of all, I want to examine 4C super fast charging and add a little bit of context to that. And that 4C refers to a C rate. Now C rates are used to describe the charging or discharging rate of a battery in terms of time. And they're based on a given battery capacity and charging power. For example, a C rate of 0.5 C would refer to fully discharging or fully charging a battery in two hours. One C then would refer to a full charge or discharge in one hour, two C in 30 minutes, three C in 20 minutes, and the four C rate that CATL specifically mentions would mean fully discharging or charging their battery technology in 15 minutes. In order to illustrate how impressive this is and to add a little bit of context, here are a few examples with some battery sizes for context. For example, if you had an electric vehicle with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack and you were able to charge that at a rate of 400 kilowatts, that would equal a rate at that point when you're charging at 400 kilowatts, a rate of 4C. That's an impressively high charge rate, 400 kilowatts. There's not any vehicles in Tesla's lineup that are listed as charging at a max rate of 400 kilowatts. That would be extremely impressive. If you had an electric vehicle with a 75 kilowatt hour battery pack, charging at a rate of 4C would mean charging at 300 kilowatts. Beyond those two examples, I think the rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3, which is equipped with a lithium iron phosphate battery from CATL, the current version of that, I believe that's a good example for an illustration as well. 
that vehicle has a pack capacity of around 60 kilowatt hours. And the EPA rated range of that vehicle is 272 miles, which equates to 438 kilometers. If you go to the Tesla China website and you look up the range of the rear wheel drive Model 3, according to the CLTC test cycle, that range is listed at 556 kilometers, which equates to 345 miles. So as you can see, the CLTC test cycle is a little bit more generous when it comes to range. But nonetheless, if the rear wheel drive Model 3 was able to charge at a rate of 4C with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack, that would mean charging at a rate of 240 kilowatts. This would be quite a substantial jump from the max charge rate currently listed by Tesla for the rear wheel drive Model 3 because on their website, they list that this vehicle can charge at up to 170 kilowatts at its max level. So as I've illustrated, a charge rate of 4C is impressive and would be a step change over the current lithium iron phosphate battery technology that Tesla is currently using from CATL. Now, interestingly enough, beyond the 4C charge rate, in this press release, it's also written, quote, at room temperature, Xinzing can charge to 80% state of charge in 10 minutes. If I'm understanding this correctly, charging from 0 to 80% in 10 minutes actually equates to a faster than 4C charge rate. For example, if you have an electric vehicle with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack and you're able to charge that battery pack from 0% to 80% in 10 minutes, that would equate to an average charge rate of 5C. And that would also mean charging at an average rate of 500 kilowatts. That's extremely impressive. So with that number, is CATL claiming that the 4C rate is not the max? but the average during the charging cycle, since the charging curve generally slows at the end of a charging cycle. So for example, at room temperature, is CATL saying that from zero to 80%, you can charge at a 5C rate and then it slows down for the last 20%, but at the end of the day, you're still able to charge that battery from zero to 100% in 15 minutes and average a rate of 4C? I don't know, that seems to be possible what CATL is claiming here, that the average charge rate is 4C for this battery technology, not the peak, but the average. So you might be able to, with this battery technology, actually fully charge from zero to 100% a battery, this lithium iron phosphate battery technology, um, fully at a rate, an average rate of 4C, which once again, a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack charging at a rate of 4C would mean an average of 400 kilowatts of charging power. That's really impressive. Now beyond room temperatures, because that zero to 80% charge in 10 minute claim was specifically about room temperature charging, what about at cold temperatures? Well, on that topic, in this CATL press release, it's written, quote, meanwhile, CATL leverages cell temperature control technology on system platforms to ensure that cells heat up to the optimal operating temperature range rapidly, allowing a 0 to 80% charge in just 30 minutes in temperature as low as negative 10 degrees Celsius and uncompromised 0 to 100 km per hour acceleration performance at low temperatures. So being able to charge from 0 to 80% in 30 minutes, even in cold weather, once again at negative 10 degrees Celsius, which equates to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, while slower than at room temperature, this is still quite impressive at these cold temperatures. For example, according to evdatabase.org, the rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3 can charge from a 10% to 80% state of charge in around 25 minutes. And that vehicle is equipped with a lithium iron phosphate battery pack. But that 10 to 80% charge in 25 minutes, that's not talking about charging in below freezing temperatures. So this new lithium iron phosphate battery technology from CATL can charge from zero to 80% in 30 minutes. So that's really right on par with um, regular temperature charging of the rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3 with a current generation of lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now beyond charging performance, it also appears like these new lithium iron phosphate batteries are more energy dense than current LFP battery technology because CATL specifically in this press release makes a claim that with these batteries, they allow for the range of an electric vehicle to be over 700 kilometers on a single charge, which once again is around 435 
miles. I wish CATL would have provided more details around achieving a range of over 700 kilometers in an electric vehicle with this battery technology. However, I believe we have enough information to at least kind of add some context to this and to see how impressive this really is. For example, the rear wheel drive Tesla Model 3 is extremely efficient and currently uses lithium iron phosphate batteries sourced from CATL. So I believe CATL using a rear wheel drive Model 3 for an example would make a lot of sense. I'm not saying they are here, but it would make a lot of sense. But using this vehicle for context. If this new battery technology allowed the rear wheel drive Model 3 to be rated at a range of 700 kilometers according to the CLTC test cycle, that would be approximately an increase of 21% more range than the current CLTC uh, rating of the rear wheel drive Model 3. So that would be an impressive jump. In terms of EPA rated range, a 21% increase over the current EPA rating of the rear wheel drive Model 3 would equal around 329 miles of range, which would be very impressive, especially when you consider a vehicle having a lithium iron phosphate battery pack with over 320 miles of range. That would be extremely impressive and would be nearly as much range as the long range all wheel drive Model 3, which is currently listed as having a 333 mile EPA rated range. Now, when it comes to how this was all achieved and how this battery technology is capable of this impressive performance, this CATL press release does describe some of the ways that they were able to um, achieve this kind of performance. And it looks like CATL pretty much improved every major component of the battery, including, for example, cathode material improvements. This press release specifically describes nano-crystallized LFP cathode material. And when it comes to what CATL means here by nano-crystallized LFP cathode material, I understand this to mean that CATL was able to engineer the crystalline structure of these LFP cathode materials to be extremely small. So a bunch of really, really small um, nanometer scale crystals. Having extremely small crystals in this LFP cathode material apparently has some pretty serious performance benefits. And I believe this is actually a big key to how this battery technology is able to perform so well. In addition to cathode material improvements, CATL also made anode material improvements as well. This press release describes a fast ion ring technology. And this fast ion ring technology, quote, increases intercalation channels and shortens the intercalation distance for lithium ions. Now that sounds like a mouthful, but on a basic level, it's really not that difficult to understand what CATL is describing here. Um, when a battery is being discharged, lithium ions move from the anode into the cathode of the battery. When a battery is being charged, lithium ions move out of the cathode back into the anode. Intercalation, specifically on the anode side of the battery, since that's what we're describing right now, refers to the lithium ions being inserted or stored in the anode material. That's the intercalation process. CATL's fast ion ring technology apparently opens more channels for lithium ions to intercalate into the graphite and also makes the distance that the lithium ions have to travel shorter. When you increase the number of channels and shorten the distance of travel for these ions, this allows for a faster rate of charge without a traffic jam of lithium ions and a traffic jam of lithium ions caused by trying to charge a battery too quickly leads to lithium plating on the anode surface, which decreases battery capacity and leads to dendrites, which can eventually lead to battery failure. In addition, this press release describes some improvements to the electrolyte of the battery as well, which leads to improved conductivity. In addition, CATL has made improvements to the separator of a battery, and the separator is what keeps the anode and the cathode separate in a battery, and it keeps those two from connecting and short-circuiting the battery, but a separator does allow for lithium ions to pass through from one side of the battery to the other. This new separator that CATL is using apparently has high porosity, which I believe allows for lithium ions to pass through easier. Now, when it comes to when CATL plans to mass produce these batteries and when we could actually see them in an electric vehicle, 
Apparently, according to the CTO of CATL's China e-car business, quote, mass production of Shenzhen will be achieved by the end of this year, and electric vehicles equipped with Shenzhen will be available on the market in the first quarter of next year. So in conclusion, this appears to be a big breakthrough for lithium iron phosphate battery technology. And there's a great chance that Tesla will benefit from these new batteries since they source their current lithium iron phosphate batteries from CATL. I'm extremely excited about the potential benefits of this new battery technology, and I would love to see a Tesla vehicle in 2024 equipped with these lithium iron phosphate batteries. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.